them. I go to their Christmas party and meet all their novelists, friends, and the Stanford. And I walked, I started to walk back down, and I turned to the field and I said, Oh my God. <laughs> you rock. <laughs> that was a powerful demo of your passion. It sort of gave me a wink. <laughs> so this is what we're dealing with. If we acknowledge that it is there, and guess what? It's got this thing. Despite all of the craziness, despite all of the fears that we have inside us, when we have the fears inside us about what could happen, you know, you know, they talk about the little lady who, uh, you know, uh, was terrified of all these things that never happened. Or little old man, could be me too. Uh, we, we project, we do that, we don't ask, is this really as bad as it should be? We don't check in with the field, but the field is more coherent. And I'll leave you with two things. What makes the field? So what did Edgar experience? How is that made? Where does it come from? I think it comes from life itself. I want the view that the system that made those little protocells, cells, that shapes probability, that creates a communal interaction, that writes a ton of memory and, and reads it, and that's called genes, winds up, is stacked by the sun rising every day with instant solar radiation that drives that system over and over again from wet dry cycles to driving biology, and it stacks life for four billion years. It goes stacked and stacks against all odds, against incredible like asteroid impacts and frozen earths and all these terrible things and has pushed us up this probabilistic slope like this against all the impacts of of the second law trying to, to tear it down and all the incredible driving force of life driven by this solar energy that keeps coming and coming and coming and now we're in this incredible zone of complex beings and culture and technology but it's the same cycle Probability, interaction, memory. Probability, interaction, memory. Going, 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 going. And I think that we're on this spire. I call it, I had a vision of this. We're on this silver spire up here. We are four billion years and, and an infinite amount of probabilistic gradient away from the background of the cosmos. And that is, creates a potential. And that potential, I think, is what is powering the field. And as so as we get more connected and more things, more probabilistic miracles can happen because the potential gradient is giant and getting bigger and it's accelerating. But we also have memory that's stacked up in the system and we also have massive interconnects. And we're connected in ways we have no idea. You know, we have neurons and we have hormones and we have the world and we have our bodies. We have song, and we have traffic signals, and all those are our connections, but there's probably another etheric field at work that science is only just starting to touch on, that the healing arts is approaching. Science and the healing arts are approaching the etheric field, the synchronistic field, and say, we can study this. This is part of the work of ions, of course. So if we're in this thing that's made by life itself, we need not put it elsewhere. We need not put it out in the cosmos and say, well, the cosmos is conscious and was always conscious. No. That's a disservice to life. In a way, that's a denial of life. We don't have to give that away. That incredible legacy, that incredible companion is us. It is the living world in its totality, made moment by moment by moment by the cycling system that has these properties. It's us. We don't need to give it away to a being or an entity or a form or an idea. It is here now, all at every moment, flowing through us at this moment, every single nanosecond, the field. And I think attunement with the field can happen when we attune to our internal kindergarten, to the little wounded ones. The Dalai Lama himself, uh, one of the people in our group, uh, brought this news to the Dalai Lama and said, Your Holiness, aren't we taking three-year-olds from their families and putting them in monasteries still? And they were like, that's what they still do. Are we not traumatizing those beings because we took them away from their families? And there was a sudden realization, you probably are. Because His Holiness had asked the following question, why are there not 10,000 Buddhas? Where are they? Am I a Buddha? Are you a Buddha? 
what's going wrong here? There's beings that haven't, haven't had their little needs met. And when the needs are met, when those little wounds are met, and really seeing them owned, not disowned, all the time, and you hold that position, like every little kid can, of watching things and laughing about them or getting tripped out by colors, they can hold the position of their little wounded running around beings. They can also be the Atman or the Raman or the... They can go into the Samadhi, but the beings are still there and you hold them. At the same time, you have union. Nothing's denied. Everything's included. And I think this is where we're coming now. We're going to come to completion, to wholeness, just at the time we need it. And we can ask the field for help. Help use your intelligence, your growing intelligence, to help us with this healing, please. Come and call through our systems. We need help. When we can get it, and we did it. We're so precious. We're so rare in the cosmos. Pay attention. Thank you.